Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to Coding Game, the series where I explore coding game in the Python language and try and learn a little bit about it and expand my knowledge. Uh, it's not a tutorial series, but you can come along for the ride as I have a go at this. So here we've got temperatures. So in this exercise, we have to analyze records of temperatures to find the closest to zero. Interesting. So we have to write a program that prints the temperature closest to zero uh, among the input data. If two numbers are equally close to zero, positive integer has to be considered closest to zero. So five and minus five, we want five. Okay, so for our program, we must read the data and then write the results. In line one, uh, we get n, the number of temperatures to analyze, which is this bit of code here. And then we get a string uh, with n temperatures expressed as integers ranging from minus 273 to 5526, which will be uh, this section here. Uh, which is interesting. So t, uh, a temperature expressed as an integer, so we get t um, from the i input, and it looks good. And then we have to write stuff here and pass the result back. Okay, so we've got to process this stuff. We're going to need some loops and all sorts, and we're going to have to do it all by ourselves. Right then, so what we're going to do with this, uh, let's just really make sure we understand exactly what's going on here. So we're going to get so many inputs. So we're going to need some sort of loop that goes around n number of times, because that's the number of temperatures we have to analyze and then we end up with this loop here for i input so we get an input and we split it so the, the different splits uh, we get this variable i as a string which we turn into an integer and store as t hmm. i guess we're going to then have to get that t and put it somewhere in some sort of array so we're going to have to uh, work with that array to work out what's better so let's have a look now I'm going to just do a little bit of googling on my second screen to get some reference material uh, for working with arrays now it might be that there is a different data structure that is better for this sort of thing than arrays but we're going to give that a go so let's have a look here so um, we can access element of arrays just by giving the array and then uh, the the kind of integer position of it that's fine uh, we can modify the turn of array and we can get the length of an array and we can loop around elements within the array so I think we want to uh, we can what can we do we need to add an element to an array so what we've got looping through adding elements to array so we we use something called append okay so we're going to declare our own array here so uh we're going to call it should we call it temperatures with an s and to declare it as an array do we need to declare it hmm I'm not sure we do. Let's just try using it straight out of the box. So we're going to say we're going to set the ith value. Ah, uh, now hang on, we need to count through, don't we? T becomes equal for that i within the input split. So do we need to count through them? Hmm. Hang on a minute. This input, this uh, here, this input is already an array. So can I just go like temperatures becomes equal to this input? why not why not that that seems to work right right okay 
Hmm. I think I'm losing myself here. I need to. I need to potentially backtrack and think about what what's going on here. So it's splitting out the input and saying for this string get the temperature as an integer okay i don't think we act i think i'm overcomplicating this because i don't need to do any sort of weird sorting or anything like that i just need to remember the closest temperature to zero as it goes through the input don't i okay yeah let's get rid of that i'm overcomplicating it we just need our output so uh best temp for best temperature because we don't need the index of it we just need the best temperature let's put the s in the right place there we go best temperature and we'll set that equal to uh i don't know let's let's set it equal to minus one no wait minus is within the range can i do it to null so it's like not set. Hmm. I don't know how to null in Python. Shall I look that up? Shall I look that up? Shall I look that up? No, nah, let's not look it up. Let's leave it. Let's just put it down as 6,000. There we go. So what we need to do now, we need to say, is T, the new temperature, better than the best temp? So we'll say, if T is... Um, hmm. Now this is this is the weird thing. If T is less than the current best temperature, but also greater than zero, and I don't know how to do and, so we'll have a look at that. Oh, actually, that syntax just seems to work. Hmm. Okay, we need we need to move this around so it works better. So if T is uh oh gold, 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 gold. This one's frying me a little bit here. Let's let's try that. So if T is between zero and the best temperature, that means it's actually closer. That's the positive check, I think. And then then our best temperature just becomes t doesn't it and then we'll say oh i don't know i don't know right what if when we do the check we ignore the polarity no, because if we ignore the polarity, then we if two temperatures are the same, then we're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so if this temperature is greater than zero, but also less than the best temperature, then we set it as the new best temperature. That works for positive numbers. Then we'll say if the temperature is less than zero what's the what's an and so let's do uh let's do python logic so we're looking for logical operators here um logical operators just google that and it says uh, we need what, what's and so we've got the arithmetic operations assignment oper operations and we've got less than equal to oh it's just the word and <laughs> so if if t is less than zero we know it's negative don't we so that's cool and then also t is great greater than the best temperature then the best temperature becomes T. 
and we're going to say if t is greater than zero and t is less than the best temperature then the best temperature becomes t now this might do it but i'm not sure about my logic here i need to work this in my mind and make sure i've got it right so this is the scenario where t is positive and if t is positive and it's better than the best temperature, then we put that in. I don't think this is going to work for positive and neg negative numbers at the same time. I think this would work for one or the other, but not both. So I'm going to have a little think about this, and then I'm going to come back with what I can figure out. Right then, I have had a little think about this, and I think I've been overcomplicating it, and I think there's an easy way of doing it. So let's just move this stuff down. What we're going to do is we're going to use this little method here. This little method returns the absolute value of something. So if you give it a 5, it will give you 5. If you give it minus 5, it will give you 5. So we don't have to worry about whether the number is positive or negative. So let's say if the absolute value of t is less than our, the absolute value of the best temperature, then we make t equal to the best temperature. And I think, apart from that condition where they're both the same, that's it. Okay, we can get rid of all this rubbish here. We can put that this side of the comment so it's in the right place. And that's all we have to worry about. That will say, okay, this value that I've got here, it could be 4. Is that less, so closer to 0, than the best temperature we've had so far, which might be 5? If it is less, then we set that one in. And we don't use the absolute version of T here because we actually we want to keep that best temperature. And then that is what we return. So this will work, but it won't work necessarily if both temperatures are negative because we want to display the positive one in that particular scenario. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an extra test case. We're going to say if the absolute t is the same as the best temperature uh, we need double equals for equals to and t is greater than zero so if it's positive then we want our best temperature to become equal to t and the reason for that is that we we are not worried about whether it's positive or negative in this first comparison in this first comparison we just say look let's see how far away from zero it is whether it's positive or negative and just take the lowest one we've got then we just need to go well actually if they're the same and our current one is positive that's the one we want so we just pop that in there and there we go so this comparison will work for any value which is not the same both positive and negative and this test will work for anything where it is exactly the same and then we pass that best temperature back see i knew there would be or i thought there'd be a relatively straightforward way of doing it let's see what that looks like so if we play the test case we get a failure we got 6,000 and we expected 1. Oh dear, why was that? Let's have a look. Maybe we've got some polarity the wrong way around here. So uh, we want to say if... Yeah, I, this, I think we've got the wrong way around here. So we want to say that if our temperature... is less than the best temperature then set then set best temperature equal to t silly me that's the bit that was wrong it wasn't the polarity of our greater than or equal than sign it was the fact that we was assigning the values the wrong way around here 
There we are. That was a bit of a bug to work out. Okay, let's try again. Success! So look, we got an output of 1 for a simple test case. Um, I don't think the actually tells us much more, but let's do only negative numbers. So we got 5, which is a success. Although I don't think we actually get a list of what we have, which is interesting. I mean, we could use this print debug to go um, and actually print out the list of T. So we could just put T in there. So you can see that we get uh, the debug output there. So we get uh, minus 12, minus 5, minus 137, and it says 5. Can we increase the size of that? No, it's just the entire screen. Okay, never mind. Let's do the right temperature. So here we've got 42, minus 5, 12, 21, 5, and 24, and we correctly choose 5. So this second condition here is kicking in and choosing that positive 5 over the negative one we've already got. We've got another one here, choose the right temperature, 2, and it does the same again there. So we've got the positive 5 first, then the negative 5, and we output the 5. Complex test case, so we've got quite a few different values there, and we come out with 2, which is correct. No temperature. Interesting. Okay, so look here. Uh, we need to display 0 if no temperatures are provided. We forgot about that completely skipped over it. So what I think we should probably do is just set best temperature to zero in the first place. That means that um, we'll be all right then for this particular test case. Let's try that again and it's a su success because if we don't loop through this section, we only loop through this section if there is um, valuable uh, valuables values to split. If there's no split, that 4 is no loops, and we just put out the best temperature straight away, which is 0. And that is all of those test cases. We can just do play all, and oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this. We've got a failure on the first case now. This is why you need to retest everything when you make a change. So here, we've got a standard output where we get, minus one, uh, we get 1, minus 2, 8, 4, 5, and we've output 0. Interesting. I wonder why. Ah, of course, because our best temp uh, is zero, so we're, that's that's going to be the best thing we, we want, and that's no good. Right. Having it as 6,000 was required for the way that we're doing it to work. What we need to do then is just say, at the end of this, if it's still 6,000, if be best temperature is still equal to 6,000, we'll just say, we'll actually just, just set it to zero. And that will do the job. Uh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Oh, set it to zero. We need an equals in there. There we go. So uh, this little condition here deals with if we've got no test cases. There's probably a different way around to work this so that we don't have to set it to one thing and then switch it back afterwards. But for now, I think that should work. Let's try that again. So that's a success. That one's a success. And if we do play all test cases, we can see that it skips through them all and they're all a success. There we go. We, we got there in the end. So the for me, the trick from this one was using the absolute function to get uh, the uh, value the like the scalar va scalar value of that which was good and we had to add a little condition in for a particular unique scenario but there we go we can submit that and we get our report back going yes 100 percent we know a little bit about arrays loops and conditions now well there we go thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed that if you want to follow on along with stuff like this and you're not already subscribed please consider doing so and give the video a like because well you've made it all the way through so you must have enjoyed it that's my theory anyway thank you very much for all your support and i will see you in the next one for now goodbye